G'day folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Garmin Overlander. Before we get going on that, make sure if you get anything out of this video, give me the big thumbs up, it helps the channel. Subscribe for future videos. Let's get on with it. I'm in the studio, but I've done a lot of work while I've been traveling on the Garmin Overlander. So today, this video is about how I find the Gar Garmin Overlander. I've had it for about six months now. Some of the... Um, useful bits and pieces in the Garmin Overlander. There's a lot in it that I don't use. So I'll show you the main bits. I will do another video further down the track and show you right through the Garmin. Uh, in relation to disclosure, I'm not sponsored at all by Garmin. I paid full price for this, had it delivered to my address about six months ago and I've been using it for the last six months. So a nuts and bolts type video on the Garmin Overlander. Right, let's start with the construction. I'm not going to bother you with the unboxing. I did a video on the unboxing, but I didn't post it because oh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not into looking at unboxing videos myself, so I'm not going to post an, unbo an unboxing of, of the Garmin. I will, at the end of this video, show you what came in the box. Just really quickly, I'll show you the bits that were in the box as I received it. Now, construction. Construction of the Garmin Overlander. It's very basic. You've got the main piece. You've got the um, magnetic uh, adapter here, and that goes on really easily, and uh, comes on automatically once you uh, once you put it on. It's quite a good strong thing. In six months, I've never had it rattle off, so no trouble at all using it. I use it on a joystick type mount in my car. It's, it's a big ram mount that comes up from the floor. It's bolted to um, one of the bolts in the seat comes up stands like a, a gear stick I guess you'd call it and this goes on top of the gear stick and then this just attaches to it when you need to use it you can pull this off and use it as you need it and just put it straight back on it's very easy on and off it's a dustproof cover and it's supposed to be drop proof as well from three feet I'm not going to drop it to find it out but it, it certainly is a sturdy sturdy piece of equipment it, it's got a little bit of weight in it not not a lot probably I guess probably the best part of 400 grams, thereabouts. So a little bit of weight, quite a sturdy construction, dust proof, it's supposed to be drop proof, I'm not going to test that. On the side of the Garmin here, there's a, um, so just to work our way around, you've got the power on and off button just here. There's a little flap here. I've got no fingernails, so I'll use a knife to get this flap started. So a little flap here, you'll see that's where the SD card goes and a, um, uh, a downloading port. There's also, looks like a, a jack there for an earphone or a head, headset. Not sure what that is. I never used that, I never needed to. But uh, yeah, you can download direct from here. We can just take the SD card out. Um, I always just take the SD card out. Actually, I don't. Um, I do it wirelessly, so when it comes in, it just um, syncs with the computer as I leave it on my desk. It works from there. So it does have 360 reading on it. At the top, you'll see two more buttons, volume control. And that's it for buttons. And that brings us back to the beginning. Okay, we'll just leave it connected to power at the moment. So this is your home screen. Home screen comes with main the two main modes, which is a drive mode and explore mode. The drive mode, that's just your standard navigation system for navigating around the cities and the towns as you uh, drive through them. The explore mode, you can get either go back to it to get into explore and tap on it. That's your navigation system that you use when you're out and about in, in the countryside looking for tracks. So the other way to get into explore is when you're on the home screen, that little icon up here, touch that and that'll take you through to explore. Now you've got plus minus here, we'll go minus a few times here. And you can see it's HEMA maps and it's Australia wide so it'll cover anywhere that you want to travel. You can see I've got a map, I've got it planned here. Uh, that'll be the, the first half of the Simpson Desert trip that I'm doing next year, starting at Birdsville, finishing at Mount Dare. And then we're doing the Madigan line that comes back to, to Birdsville from from Mount Dare. So that's all happening next May. There are two main maps. We go back to the beginning. And we hit where to. 
this brings up all the other menus as you can see before we get into that you've got menu items or icons all the way along there you've got menu icons all the way down there so plenty to play with plenty to choose from but we'll go where to and you can either just type in your keyword for what it is that you're looking for now it doesn't have to be a street address that keyword can be uh, Commonwealth Bank can be the post office or um, whatever it is that you're looking for so it's just a keyword within we'll try it while we're here um, I'm in Redcliffe so let's just go uh, Commonwealth Bank Commonwealth Bank then it should bring up all the different Commonwealth Bankers banks from the closest to the furthest and you just pick the one that you want now we want the closest one Anzac Avenue at Redcliffe and you hit go start new route and it'll make a route up to get you to the Commonwealth Bank we'll go back where to categories categories your gas stations or your campgrounds rest areas uh, restaurants attractions recreation shopping um, everyday life art and entertainment medical care transit parking lodging so you can see you've got a quite a, quite a few to choose from there the touchscreen works really well gas stations there are all the gas sta stations that are close all campgrounds so this lists all the campgrounds as you're traveling uh, the ones that are closest to you to furthest away in any direction it'll give you little directions over here south north east north west etc etc and you can choose from the campgrounds as you're driving when it uh, comes time to to find somewhere to stop for the day now when i'm traveling uh, i pretty much use categories and i use all campgrounds um, apart from that I, I don't really use anything else all right the next one in the queue is pitch and roll pitch and roll is exactly that so when you're on a dead flat surface both level north to south as well as east to west hit calibrate and it'll get everything flat then as you pitch and roll as you move up and down the hills you can see it'll pitch and roll pretty cool okay the next one along is track recorder it's pretty handy it does exactly that um, when you start a track you hit start and it'll go through and keep all your dits, details uh, so that later on when you get back you can pair it with a computer and uh, download it include it in any video or, or keepsake you might might have on the uh, on your desktop um, it covers recorded distance total time moving time stopped current speed overall average speed moving average and maximum speed and when you're done you just hit stop and it'll give you some options here resume recording save track to Garmin Explore discard track and we'll discard this one because we don't want to save it and move on to the next one ABC this one's pretty cool um, it gives you elevation it gives you a barometer and it gives you a compass um, quite handy all of these things can be included in your main screen too so if you go back to your main screen and you hit this little button down the corner you can include things like elevation as you're driving and see it as you go um, you can include trip data there's your trip data you can include pitch and roll as well up to elevation where's pitch pitch and roll so you can get your pitch and roll and have your pitch and roll there as you're driving along all really cool features and to be honest with you I don't use them very much campgrounds it's got its own icon and as you uh, as you're traveling along and you, it's getting time to to think about where you're going to stop for the night you can hit campgrounds and it'll give a list of campgrounds from the closest to the furthest away and uh, it just keeps on going it's endless you can pair telephone with it you can pair any other Garmin device with it this is just another menu it's very similar to what we've already looked at checking for system updates we won't do that that'll take forever and settings are the last one so all, all adjustable now explore these are your tracks you can zoom in on a track that you might want to do and the closer you get to the track the more detailed 
your track gets. Quite detailed, I'm impressed with it. Uh, is it worth a thousand dollars? Probably not. Like it depends, if you've got a spare thousand dollars, it really is a handy device to have in the car and it's great, everything at your fingertips. I'd rather have that as a separate item to my phone. Um, you could use an iPad with uh, HEMA maps downloaded on your iPad and you've probably got most of what the Garmin can do. I never did that. I, I quite often just used my phone with HEMA maps on it. And I just found that to be a pain in the butt sometimes because you wanted to use your phone for other things. I also used my phone as a camera. It just, there were too many things that my phone was useful for outside navigation. So I wanted a separate navigational system. I could have just gone to an iPad, would have been a lot cheaper to use an iPad that I had at home for navigation. That said, if you had to go out and buy an iPad, you'd probably find your iPad's going to be the same price or dearer than the Garmin, but obviously you can do other things with an iPad as well. Would I recommend it? I, I would recommend it to anybody that's got the spare thousand dollars and can afford a really good navigation system that's dedicated to navigation and uh, I think you'll be more than happy with it if you do go down that road. That said, you can get away with using an iPad or a separate device other than your phone. I, I wouldn't recommend using a phone for navigation if you're going to navigate your way around Australia through tracks. Alright, that's the Garmin Overlander. Before we uh, wrap things up, one thing I'd like to say is I always take paper maps with me. Um, you can't beat a paper map. They're very easy to use, they're very easy to see all at once where you've been, where you are, and where you're going. It never changes, it's always there and doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't break. Uh, failing a fire I guess. But paper maps, always have paper maps with me as a backup. That brings us to the end of the video, thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Hope you got something out of this video, hit that subscribe button and uh, some watch future videos on the channel. Make sure you give me a big thumbs up if you got something out of this and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care. Overland, uh, it's got a serial number, Bluetooth symbol, barcode and Taiwan. So inside the box, there's four little screws there that'll be for mounting. That's the power cable that goes into cigarette lighter in the car. That's the charging block, the RAM mount that goes onto the back of the ca camera, I guess, and the charging mount, and that'll be the suction cup for the window.